Anyway, um, this E3 is going to be very, very interesting because Nintendo is at an extremely pivotal point right now where, like, this could restore some of Nintendo's, like, massively lost confidence, like, all of our lost confidence in Nintendo. Not all of it, but it could do a lot to, um, restore some confidence. Like, since Mario Kart 8 came out, like, it's boosted Nintendo sales a lot, which is great for Nintendo, but... I don't really like Mario Kart 8 that much. It's not a bad game or anything, it's just... I played it for a few hours with my brothers, and it's like... It was much more... Oh, wow. A large. It was much harder to control, like, your cart in Mario Kart 8 than it was in Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS. Uh, oh, shit! Hello. Don't jump on me, you piece of shit! Yes. Oh god. But anyway, um... So yeah, this is a huge deal for Nintendo right now. And I'm gonna get attacked again. Uh, wasted one blade. Sony is in a very, very good position. It's been it's been strong since. Well, I I know I'm gonna get attacked right now. Oh god! In this room, I'm gonna get attacked. That's a you're going to get attacked room. So before, okay, so as soon as I activate this, I want to jump the fuck out of this room. I don't want to be attacked in this little tiny circular room where I can't move along walls. I'm assuming I'm going to get attacked. I I'm, I'm, could be wrong. Looks like I'm wrong. Alright, so what I did was I activated the fans. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I needed to do that, but... Now I get to run past... Swirling Blades of Death. Bitch. Wow, I did a lot of damage. I was changing weapons, you piece of fuck. God! I did a lot of damage. Kind of. I have a lot of stasis packs. Ugh. I only did a lot of damages. It only did a lot of damage because I was worried about, like, backing up into a fan or something. Alright. This really isn't that dangerous. This is pretty easy to run past, but. Just knowing that one tiny little slip up could cause death. Ah, I should have this out right now. Makes it a little bit more tense. 
Ah, I didn't mean to do that at all. Shit. I see that. Oh my god! That wasn't what I wanted to do at all! Need stasis! Come on! I forget exactly how I did this. There's a way to like... Ah, I fucked that one up, I think. I think there's a way to like... Like if you stasis it and it like... I think I can do this. Nope, that didn't, that didn't work. Maybe I shouldn't be trying this. Uh, uh. No. Come on, you bitch. All right, I don't think this is going to work. I could have sworn I did this before though. I wish I remember how I did it. I wish I could remember that, but... This really isn't a tough fight anyway. I mean, I got unlimited stasis. There's really no reason for me to take damage on this fight, and I already kind of did. I stuck. Alright, a dude told me in the comments that I could dismember this thing's limbs. I remember doing that at one point, accidentally. Oh, is it dead? No way. It looks dead. It's not dead. It's totally not dead. Is it dead? It's not dead. has one arm, I think. I kind of remember having to fight two of these things at the same time. I guess I was wrong. Okay, now it's dead. Power node, yay! I thought I would have to fight two of them. This thing is alive? Get out of here. Ugh. Die! Okay, that's not working. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I can't believe I got hit. Oh my god, I used up my fucking mediums! Ugh! I hate that the game doesn't understand that I'm, like, really low on health. So, ugh. Like, I like that it's set up that way so you don't, like, accidentally, like, waste energy, I guess. Waste health. But at the same time, like, uh, That was a good opportunity for me to use a large, and it didn't. It just used my medium, so I didn't want it to. A lot of large med packs. Hmm. 
Alright. Let's do this. Anyway, um... I think Microsoft standing after E3 is going to be better than it is right now. Like, I don't think Microsoft is in, like, a terrible position, but it, it started off very weak compared to the PS4. With that whole fucking DRM nonsense that, you know... I, I think probably people mostly blew out of proportion, I would, I think. But, um... Yeah, they've been behind the PS4 as far as I know since the since the start of this new console generation. And I think they're going to make up some ground, but I don't think they're going to surpass the PS4 at this point. Um, Nintendo, I hope... I heard something terrible in, another, in a, some dude's video. Uh, according to him, he read uh, this Japanese gaming magazine called Famitsu, and he said that they were like... There were like only nine games in development for the Wii U, and I think he made that video something like two or three months ago. And um, that's pretty scary. I mean, I, I hope that I hope that doesn't mean that Nintendo really has nothing, you know, for us to look forward to. But it could mean that. Alright, I think I'm gonna get attacked again. Yep, it looks like looks like it. I don't really know where. Oh, ah, there's a I want to be aware of these vents, and I don't oh there's one here. Where what? There it is. Why am I not That was very weird. Okay, so I think there might be some items for me in here. Or on the other side over... Really? I kind of remember that distinctly. In one of these chambers, I guess. Hmm. Okay, I want to move this out of here, just in case there are corpse necromorphs in this room. Get the fuck out. Just in case. First lame, first lame, first name Justin, last name Case. Why can't I fucking talk today? I don't know. I think I'm just kind of tired from working. I think I'm just like a little, ugh, I need to just take a day to just not do anything. Like this technically, like, yeah, I'm sitting down and I'm playing a PS3 game, but I mean, I'm, I had to like set all this stuff up and I like the recording part is pretty easy it's not I wouldn't call recording working but the editing that I'm gonna have to do after this is definitely work oh. okay I guess I'm not getting attacked in this room I guess okay I kind of remember that happening though I, I kind of Sort of remember you're getting blasted in this room. I guess I remember wrong then. Wait a minute, I might not remember wrong. Just in case I do get attacked, which side do I want to be on? I think what I, I think I'm about to trigger the attack. I think. Uh, I guess this side would be better. There's really no room to like run around, but all the vents are on that side over there. Hmm. Uh, no, I was wrong. Wow. Okay. I am a fool. But now, for sure, I'm gonna get attacked been too long. I've been safe for too long. Alright, check my ammo. Got a lot of... I don't have many ripper blades. A little low on that, I guess. I have very little contact energy. I've got a lot of... Oh, I'm at the end. Sweet. 
But now I know I'm gonna get attacked, so I gotta be careful. And... Am I getting attacked now? I would really like to be in this room here while I deal with these necromorphs that are going to come out. Get rid of these fucking corpses. Uh, nothing's coming out yet. Okay. God! There's shit happening now! Oh, and the doors are fucking locked. Ugh. Shit. And there's something right behind me. It's a fucking fast one. I haven't seen these in a while. Did not miss them. wave of necromorphs. A lot of health packs. Oh, that was not the first wave. There are more waves. Shit! I don't know how... Mm, I'm not sure if the, the Necromorphs are just going to keep on coming, like, infinitely. I hope not. But I guess I should deal with these now. like to come in pairs, I've noticed. These things might just be coming infinitely. I kind of... I guess I should hurry. Fuck. Ah, 
Might have been a mistake. Why does that ever happen? Jesus. There's something else here. I heard something. We are whole. Yay. And the cold disappears. Mysteriously. And the marker is doing some crazy Emergency. shit. Orbital gravity tethers offline. Tectonic load released. Impact imminent. Evacuate this area immediately. Okay, and some shit is some bad stuff is happening now. Some scary bad stuff. Any more items? Any more items? Items, items, items. No mores. Alright. I'm curious about this though, like... Would they just have, like, kept on coming? Forever? No! No, I'm taking a shower! Ah! Don't clean me. Isaac, you really didn't think I was just gonna walk away, did you? Kind of. I can't do that. The marker's coming with me. It's a shame. I was starting to like you. Even if you are insane. No, I'm not. What? You don't believe me? Take a look at yourself. Better yet, take a look at the video from Nicole. And this time, watch it right to the end. No. Isaac, it's me. I wish I could talk to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about everything. It's cool. I wish I could just talk to someone. It's all falling apart here. I can't believe what's happening. Just download Skype. That's strange. Such a little thing. Don't say that about me. One little thing. I can make it bigger. Don't do this. No. I'll tell. There are pills. This is I the future. I didn't want it to end like this. I really wanted to see you again. Just once. I loved you. That was past tense. I always. Loved you. I was still past tense. No. And then. No, you bitch. Bitch. No. And then she's like, ah, uh, the death. And then Isaac's like, no, I can't watch. Fucker. But don't worry. It will be in good hands now. Far away from this damn place. Goodbye, Isaac. So she's running away now like a bitch.
Okay, so Nicole has been dead this whole time, apparently. And, uh, Isaac has been hallucinate. How's that door locked now? Isaac has been hallucinating like a madman. The audio just cut. Okay, it's back. The audio cut off for a second. That was very weird. Um, when I first found out about that, I thought that was an outrageous, crazy, amazing twist. And I was like, oh my god, Isaac was hallucinating the whole time. But then I thought about it. It's kind of a cliche twist. Like, I don't think anyone would, like, see it coming. I'm not saying it's predictable or anything. It just... Eh. It's not... It's not bad at all. It's not bad. Oh my god. And the game is giving us lots of ammo, guys. Lots of it. Shit loads of it. Let's take a look at my inventory. Got a lot of... I don't have a lot of pulse rifle ammo, which is not acceptable. Got 10 minutes left on this recording. Um, what? Oh, okay. Okay. So this is the, like, hub area room. And I came out of this door, and okay. Makes sense. Alright, how many power nodes do I have? I have 60,000 credits, and I've got three power nodes. I'm gonna... How many power nodes do I need? I'm gonna get that last health uh, upgrade real quick. Uh, that's one power node. Um, I'm gonna get this. That's two power nodes I need. Actually, fuck, I'll do it right now. I have the nodes. I'm gonna be using my pulse rifle a lot here. And I could be using my plasma cutter quite a bit too, I suppose. I'm not going to be using my contact beam at all, I don't think. Ripper, n probably not at all. Pulse rifle, yes. Plasma cutter, yes. Yeah. The reason being, uh, the Ripper is a, is a uh, close range weapon and the, con the contact beam is a slow weapon. Neither of those are going to be very useful in a little bit. Um, I guess just one more node. And I should be fine. Alright, my I finally, at the very end of the game, have my final health expansion. And my spine is beautiful. Okay, now to spend some of these credits. I'm, I'm going to buy two. I'll buy an extra node. Move this over. Smalls are not going to be useful to me. I don't think I'm going to need more than that. Contact energy, this is not useful. It's a lot of plasma energy. I'm going to buy a ton of fucking... A ton of fucking... Um, okay, that's, that's overkill. Four larges, five. Mi that's that's a ton. A stasis pack. Probably won't need two, but I'll, I'll check my inventory space in a second here. I'm gonna need a lot of fucking pulse rifle ammo. I'm gonna load the fuck up on pulse rifle ammo. Probably more than I need. I think that was 400. Is that 400 that I just bought? I, yeah, it was. All right. Yeah, that's probably more than I'm gonna need. Um, I'll take another stasis pack and I'll take uh, any plasma cutter ammo that I might have laying around. Let's see. Any plasma cutter? Nope, no plasma cutter ammo. Oh, I forgot my state. Alright, I'll take that second stasis pack. Probably most likely not going to need it at all. But whatever. It's there. Alright, let's uh, spend some nodes real fast. Okay, this is completely upgraded. This could use an upgrade or two. 
Plasma cutter. I could do capacity, I guess. I'll do capacity once. 16. I could do two. I could get 18 in capacity. But that's not necessary, I don't think. Ripper reload, I guess. Whatever. I'll do it. Alright. Alright. I didn't sell any of my contact beam energy. Um, I'm sort of half tempted to use a stasis pack right now just so I can go in with a full, uh, fully charged stasis, but probably won't need it at all. Alright, fully loaded. 16. Probably not going to be using my contact beam. I expect to be using my pulse rifle the most. Alright guys, here we go. Oh my god, I've got five minutes left on this recording. Holy shit. Let me check my commentary record. Alright, it's good still. Alright, let's do this. Let us rock. Oh, some last minute items. Thank you, game. I will humbly accept. Alright, any more stuff? Any more stuff? Oh, no more stuff. Oh, more stuff. Ah. Alright, here we go. So there's Kendra the traitor bitch. And there's a big tentacle. And she was not quick enough. Spanked! And she is fucking dead. Alright. Let's do this! I remember this boss being pretty easy except for one little part of it. Alright. I could die here though. Probably won't, but I could. I kind of remember how this goes. Sort of. This is obviously a weak point. Alright, so what I need to do is dodge its tentacles like this. Fire. Okay, yeah, this is super easy. Dodge, attack. Whoa, shit! Already? Okay. Oh my god, this is so hard to... Oh, this is... I don't know if it's harder on hard difficulty or what, but this is really fucking hard to aim. Alright, one... Come on, you bitch! Yes! Victory! Oh, I lost my... Oh, there it is. Okay. I forgot exactly how this goes. I guess I just shoot these? Oh, is it gonna hit me with this tentacle? Oh shit, okay. Oh, and it's still hitting me with its tentacles. Oh wow. Ow. That was a panic heal right there. So this is pretty easy to dodge, as you can see. I just gotta wait for it to reveal its uh, 
It's a weak spot, pretty standard for video. And it throws ammo at me, really? Jesus. Pretty standard for a video game. I don't know how much damage these tentacles would do to me if they if they hit me, but I don't think they would kill me in one hit. I don't think I can hit it right now either. Yeah, this is kind of like ridiculously easy to dodge. For a final boss, this is kind of this is insane. So got oh not a ton of pulse rifle ammo left. Not a ton. I have less than I want to have. So I'm gonna be switching to my plasma cutter in a sec. It's rock, bitch! Alright. I think that was it. I think. Either that or it's gonna. Is that it? I think that was it. Oh, that was totally it. Alright. Yeah, so that was not difficult. Um, I can't go back because that big tentacle is conveniently blocking my way. Uh, I can only go here. So I guess that's what I'm going to do. And Isaac is suddenly very, in a very big hurry. <laughs> That's not how you hack doors, Isaac. I guess it is, actually. I don't know. Okay, so the marker is right there, and we're leaving it on the planet. Uh, it, I guess that's what we wanted to do in the first place. That's what that crazy doctor wanted us to do. Kendra wanted to take it away somewhere, so we ditched it on the planet. And what the fuck is that? That's a big explosion that just happened there. That basically was the end of Super Metroid. That's basically what that was. And now... It's all quiet and peaceful. In space. And Isaac, for the first time in the game, removes his helmet. And he looks... Very... He looks like an old man. He looks... He's got gray hair, like an old Hispanic man. I like that they made Isaac look normal. He doesn't... Isaac, it's me. I wish I could talk to you. Aw, oh, he's sad. I'm so I like that they made him look like just a normal, unimpressive dude. He doesn't look like a superhero or anything. And there's some shit, some shadow shit in the back. Oh my god. And that noise just now was my controller rumbling on the table beside me. So that's the end of Dead Space. Um, yeah, Nic Nicole, or like a Nicole apparition, I guess, attacks uh, Isaac as he's leaving whatever the fuck that planet was. And um, that kind of leads into the beginning of Dead Space 2 which is a game that I'm not going to be playing for a long time, I think. I think I've had enough Dead Space for a while. Um, not to say that Dead Space 2 is bad or anything, but it's... The gameplay is basically the same. It's basically just more Dead Space 1, which is great. In terms of a horror game, in terms of being a scary game, I would say Dead Space 2 is a small step down from Dead Space 1, but it's much more action-y, I, I think, I, I guess. Um, it's a great game. Dead Space 2 is a great fucking game. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah. Between Dead Space 2 and 3, a major fucking drop-off. How could you do this, Visceral Games? How dare you? I said it at the end of my Dead Space 3 LP. I think it had something to do with... I guess, I'm guessing, I have no idea, This I have no evidence to support this, but I'm guessing 
that EA probably rushed Visceral Games to complete Dead Space 3. The game seems very rushed to me. It was pretty buggy. It's just, it was lackluster. It was... It was just a, it was just so much less than Dead Space 1 and 2. It was just so much of a lesser game. I, I didn't like it at all. I mean, I had fun playing it because it was a co-op game with my little brother. That was fun. But I would not want to play that game single player at all. Oh my god. It's hot in my room and water is delicious. Anyway, my thoughts and feelings on Dead Space 1. Great fucking game. Very, very good. A solid fucking game. Um, pretty scary. Pretty scary, especially if it's your first time playing it. It's pretty, pretty... I remember when I played it, I had... I thought it was the scariest game that I had ever played. Up till that point. It was scarier than anything I'd ever played. It was terrifying. And it was awesome. And I thought that about Dead Space 2, actually, also. Hmm... Well, Dead Space 2 has its scary, really terrifying moments, but I think overall Dead Space 1 is probably a little scarier. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, for its time, Dead Space looked very good. The art was pretty solid. Uh, the I didn't know this until I started recording, but Dead Space actually only outputs uh, 720p, so it's not full 1080. I don't know what Dead Space 2 is, but... I started uploading these videos in 1080p, not really paying attention to what the recording, uh, the the recording resolution was, and yeah, it's actually 720. So, at some point, I switched to just rendering in 720 and uploading in 720. So, if you notice that some of the videos are in 1080, but then it switches to 720, know that actually, if you were to play these videos in 1080p on YouTube, you would actually be getting the exact same quality as you would be if you were watching it in 720. If, on the 720 setting. Anyway. Um, um, art was pretty solid. The, the music, I think, for a horror game, it's pretty good. There's really not any, like, music in this game. It's more like just ambient background noises. Um, there's, I guess there's some, like, super suspenseful music I guess you could call it but I kind of felt like like in Zelda Ocarina of Time or Wind Waker if you're near an enemy you hear that that like battle theme play and it plays until like you are no longer in the like immediate proximity of enemies and it kind of does that for Dead Space also it had its own like suspense theme or whatever they called it um, I kind of felt like that might have been a little bit overdone in some parts maybe but I didn't really have any complaints about the the, the music in Dead Space there was hardly any to complain about really but the sound in Dead Space I remember was very good I, I, I honestly didn't pay very close attention to the sound as I was playing through it this time but I remember thinking my first time playing it that it was very good like it it kept you on edge like you would hear necromorphs off in the distance and I I've watched a bunch of Silent Hill videos and I noticed that in Silent Hill well I've, I've watched specifically Silent Hill 1 2 and 3 by these guys run button this YouTube channel called run button they're pretty funny um, I noticed in Silent Hill like It'll play, like, sound effects that make you think that there's an enemy in the room when there's not anything in the room. Like, it'll basically trick you. Like, it'll play, like, a really loud sound effect as you're just wandering around this random room. But there, if you look around the room, there was nothing that looked like it would, it would make that sound effect. So I think, it, I think the usage of sound, like, to scare players in uh, Silent Hill games are pretty, it's, it seems pretty cheap. I didn't notice that at all in Dead Space. It's pretty good. Um, what is this? What's going on? What is this, New Game Plus that I unlocked or something? Chapter 12, Military Suit Unlocked. 
backstory logs unlocked, 50,000 credits, 10 power nodes, that's, oh my god, impossible mode. I should have already had impossible mode, I should have already had all of this, what is, what's going on? Um, oh, there's my old cleared game from 7.2 and 7.4. I beat the game and then two days later I beat it again. I guess this is, oh, an impossible, okay. I see, okay, I see what this was. Yeah, when I played this game, like, for the first time, I beat it, and then I beat it again on easy difficult. I beat it on, like, normal, I think, for the first time. And then I played it on easy just to get some uh, trophies, and I got the trophies really quick. And then I played it on impossible mode to get, like, my last trophy or something, because that, like, beating the game on impossible difficulty is another trophy. Uh, I guess that's what this is. 12 hours? 20 hours. Yeah, so I just blasted through this game really quickly I guess two days later yeah I was a fucking trophy whore back then I don't give a fuck about trophies anymore I guess I'll save here uh, I kinda don't want eh. whatever I'll press all right I'll go to the title screen I think that's what it's gonna do um load game I guess I just don't want it to start playing the opening cut the intro cutscene I kind of don't really want this uh, all right I'll leave it there while I discuss this game 13 hours my first time playing it I did 20 hours Wow I was so slow and then I did this one in 12 hours 43 minutes and then basically just an hour just an hour longer because I when I was playing this one I rushed through the game I knew exactly what I was doing and um, yeah I kind of took my time a little bit in this one anyway so yeah the sound was pretty solid in this game for its time the uh, art was pretty good the graphics were alright I actually kind of remember thinking they looked really good back then I don't remember if this game came out before or after Metal Gear Solid 4, but I remember thinking when Metal Gear Solid 4 came out, that was the new fucking standard for amazing graphics. Like, if it didn't look as good as Metal Gear Solid 4 did, did, did then it's just, you can't call it amazing. You, Amazing is reserved solely for Metal Gear Solid 4 and above. <laughs> I remember that's what I thought for a while, and I hadn't seen a, a better looking game until maybe God of War 3. Game looks pretty fucking amazing. From what I remember, I never played it, but I saw my brother playing it. Anyway, um, there's barely any music in this game to comment on. The sound was very good. Uh, the graphics were pretty good. I really liked all of the um, the narrow areas in this game. I think I want to say in Dead Space 2 there are like more... Uh, there are like wider areas for you to fight in, I think. It's not like an open fucking field or anything like that, but I, I think I remember Dead Space 1 having more like narrow corridors that you had to fight necromorphs in overall. Um, I like that. It, it created a nice sense of tension. Um, I know this game took a lot of inspiration from Alien. I would guess the first Alien. I, I don't really know about the second one. But, um, yeah, what else can I say about this game? The combat, the combat. What, are you, what can I say about the combat? It's pretty fucking solid. I really like the new idea. Like, when I first started playing this game, I was going for headshots because, like, every shooter game I had played told me that I would get, I would do, like, double damage if I shot an enemy in the head. But in this game, you can actually, like, decapitate enemies and it doesn't really do anything to them. You're supposed to dismember the limbs, of course, and I really liked that concept. It was very different, and it's it's unique to this game as far as I know, or, or this series. Um, so I really liked that a lot. Nice, fresh take on combat. Um, I don't I don't have anything negative to say about the combat, really. I don't think the Ripper could have been a little bit better of a weapon, I guess, because. What I, what I had noticed was that, like, 
I would fire the Ripper, and it would hit an enemy, but then, like, the enemy would, like, scoot up towards me a little bit more, and the Ripper Blade would kind of stay in place, and eventually the enemy would just kind of scoot past the Ripper Blade, and my Ripper Blade would just be kind of spinning in place behind the enemy, which is not useful at all. Um, I guess it was, it was most useful when I had, uh, when I was, like, against slow-moving enemies, so I could kind of back up to kind of keep them, like, in my Ripper Blade. But against fast-moving enemies, like, or enemies that didn't have their legs cut off, it was not very useful. It, it led to me getting hit a lot of the time, and that was kind of, kind of shitty. That's kind of why I used my pulse rifle more towards the end, when I discovered how amazing the pulse rifle actually was, as opposed to the Ripper Blade. Uh, or the Ripper, I mean. Uh, I know the Ripper is also in Dead Space 2. I think the pulse rifle is also... Yeah, it is. Uh, I think all of the weapons in Dead Space 1 are actually also in Dead Space 2. And Dead Space 2 has actually some new weapons added to it. I think. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, the combat in this game was pretty fucking solid. Um, I, had, I heard that the way Visceral Games was started... I heard this a long time ago. Like when Dead Space just came out. Like... It was basically just a group of guys that got together and decided, hey, let's make a video game, and they just started doing it. And that's really awesome. I I, I started making my game because I was in college, and I, I had to for my senior project. And I actually started working on it with my two partners, like, way, way in advance. Like, I think we started something like eight months before the senior project course actually began, or something, something like that. It was a long time in advance. Ironically, we didn't actually, I know I'm kind of going way off topic, but ironically, we didn't actually have a completed game by the time we had to present. I was very nervous about that, and um, but I mean, we actually did very well in our presentation, apparently. I kind of blanked out. Like, I went up there, and I was like, you know what, I don't have any lines prepared or anything. I'm just going to go up here and talk about what I fucking know about the game, which was pretty much what I had to do anyway, but I didn't prepare at all. But the only, only negative criticism that we received from anybody during the presentation was something in our documentation. Was it, like, our documentation was not as organized as it could have been, or something, something like that. But they didn't criticize the game at all, which I felt very good about because I had... I don't want to say that I designed all of it, but I would say that I designed like 90 to 95% of it. Because I did basically come up with all the ideas and I kind of... Like we would meet every week just about and I would um, like present my new ideas to them and I would kind of get it okayed. And they would tweak things a little tiny bit, but I am completely, completely off topic here. Um... Getting back to Dead Space. Uh, what else can I say about this game? It's it's a good fucking game. I guess I would have liked to I, I would have liked to have seen more variations in enemy types. Um, pretty much you had the human the humanoid type necromorphs that kind of walked on two on two legs and they had like their arms like st stretched over their heads and they kind of like wandered at you and attacked you and you had the little tiny baby necromorph things with tentacles that shot the things at you and those would like crawl along the walls and stuff you had those two and those are pretty much the only enemies you saw for a while and then the necromorph that had the exploding arm thing appeared I forget exactly when I saw that thing first. I think it might have been in the... I want to say the... Um, the chapter where you fight the Leviathan. With all the... With all the plants and the poison and all that shit. I think that's the chapter I first saw it in. So that's pretty... That's pretty late in the game. There was also that one necromorph... Um that was kind of fat and it kind of wobbled at you and if you shot it in the stomach like a bunch of little tiny things would come at you and I guess the little tiny things would count as another necromorph also so that's the humanoid one the little wall crawler one um, the exploding one the thing in the stomach one and then the little tiny ones that's five 
And then there was also um, the big tall necromorphs that kind of ran really fast at you, so that's six. And then the squids that came out of it, that's seven. And then actually also there was another thing that kind of crawled on like two arms and it had like the tail that like slashed at you, so that's eight, I think. Um, and then there's a super fast, there was a super fast one that's nine. Um, I think that's all the necromorph, oh no, and the brutes also, the brutes, the big giant ones. I guess those are kind of more like sub bosses, but they were there. Oh, and the things on the, on the wall that shot the little tentacles and the tentacles, that's 12. Not counting like the Leviathan and uh, that thing that I had to kill with the ADS cannon. Those I would consider mini bosses. So that's actually 12 enemy types. That's uh, I was kind of wrong actually. I That's actually kind of a lot. That's a good amount. Plus like uh, there were like black necromorph versions of a few of those. And those are pretty fucking tough. I mean they basically acted the same as like their normal non-black counterparts but they were more dangerous, I guess. Oh, and there was the corpse making necromorphs. That's fucking 13. Yeah, so I'm totally wrong. That's kind of a lot of different enemy types. That's, that's actually pretty impressive. Considering, I, as far as I know, this was Visceral Games' first game. As far as I'm aware. Um, hmm. Combat's very good. Uh, I liked the variety in the weapons. I didn't actually... I feel like I kind of should have shown you guys, or at least purchased the other weapons and just shown them off a little bit. Uh, the line gun was actually pretty useful. What it, it was basically a horizontal plasma cutter that shot like a wide like beam of energy. And that would like cut off Necromorph's legs and stuff. It, it pierced enemies it was it was basically a plasma cutter that was it was it could only shoot horizontally and it pierced enemies and it did more damage in the plasma cutter but it was a little bit slower and it's alt fire was actually really 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 useful I kind of think maybe I sh mm. if I were going to switch out one weapon for the line gun I would have probably switched out the ripper the pulse rifle's too fucking beast. The plasma cutter is too good. It's very fast. Um, but the line gun's alt fire was like a a timed mine, and it's if you could get a bunch of necromorphs like swarming a certain spot, and you could like hit them with stasis and shoot out a timed mine with the uh, the line gun, you could take out a lot of necromorphs all at once. It's it, that's a very efficient way to kill necromorphs. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. There was also the, I think it's called the incinerator. It's basically just a flamethrower. Basically, it's just a flamethrower. Nothing more, nothing more fancy about it than that. Uh, I remember it being pretty weak, and it's not very, it's not a very long-ranged weapon, which is why I never bothered to use it. So I guess that weapon could have used an upgrade. Um. What else? What else was it? There was a line gun, the flamethrower, the force gun. There was also the force gun, which was basically like a shotgun type weapon that I don't know how much damage it did. I th I think it did slightly more damage than the line gun maybe, but it was a short range weapon and it basically, its thing was that it knocked enemies back, I think. So that's not a bad weapon. Uh, aside from that, were there any other weapons that I didn't use? Line gun, incinerator. I think it's called the incinerator. Force gun. I think that might be it. I think that might be it. Anyway. Um, anything negative I can say about Dead Space? The difficulty curve was very balanced throughout the game. I didn't feel like... I was ever I didn't feel like at any point in the game I don't think to my recollection that the game was all of a sudden way 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 too difficult like unreasonably difficult 
There are some games that I played that do that, and it's terrible. I didn't. I don't think I ever encountered that in this game. Hmm. Yeah, not really. So the difficulty was very, very well balanced. Um, I mean, I've played this game a bunch of times already. It's been a long time since I played it, but I mean, I'm very experienced when it comes to Dead Space, and I played it on hard, obviously, and it was still pretty challenging. Like, I didn't feel like I breezed through that game at all. I actually died a couple of times. Well, to be fair, those deaths were kind of bullshit, but... Did I die, like, legitimately in this playthrough? Like, a legitimate, non-stupid death? I don't think I did, actually. Like, my first death was actually... I had stasis... And I had stasis a necromorph that I guess might have been in some attack animation. And I was walking past it, and I guess I'm, I touched it, but it was in stasis, moving super slow, and it just killed me. That was bullshit. Uh, I know I died again when I was running through that fire part. I That shouldn't have killed me either. I mean, I, I guess it should have, but it, it was dumb. That wasn't me losing to the game. Um, I think those are the only two deaths that I had in this playthrough. Does it show it on here? It doesn't show it, I think. I don't know. But, yeah, the difficulty was very good. I've covered the art, I've covered the sound, I've covered the combat, which was pretty much the game's main thing. Uh, the puzzles, there were not very many puzzles in this game, but this, again, is a very, it's mostly a combat game. There were some little tiny minor puzzles, but, I mean, I appreciate that they were there, I guess, but they were pretty much just to add a little bit of variety to the gameplay. That's another thing. This game is very... It's not repetitive. Like, yeah, most of the game is you going from room to room, killing necromorphs along the way. But at pretty reasonable intervals, you'll have to go into like a zero-gravity room, or you'll be in an airlock. And really, the airlocks, I guess, don't really add anything to the gameplay. I mean, they they muffled all the sounds. Um, you kind of can't hear necromorphs approaching, I think. And they add the element of you having to worry about suffocating. Um, they don't really change up the way you fight necromorphs the way that Zero Gravity does. They don't change the way you move the way Zero Gravity does. But it adds, it's, it's nice. I, I appreciated that a lot. So they threw in zero gravity sections and airlocks and occasionally you would get attacked by a giant tentacle and dragged through a room that was awesome and then there was the regenerator that appeared twice in the game. That was really cool. Um, hmm. It just didn't feel repetitive. It just didn't feel repetitive at all. Dead Space 3 felt very, well, I guess the second half of Dead Space 3 felt very repetitive. I don't remember Dead Space 2 feeling repetitive either. I remember it feeling pretty good. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Uh, anything, can I, can I think of anything really negative to say about Dead Space 1? Anything that really bugged me? Um, not really. Not really. The game wasn't buggy. Um, it wasn't glitchy, really. I know that there is a, like, an exploit that you can do to, like, um, basically get, like, infinite credits. Uh, as that's the only glitch I know about Dead Space 1. I didn't notice any, like, bugs really playing the game, any graphical bugs, not like in Dead Space 3. Um, what else? What else can I say about this? I really can't think of anything more to say. It's, it's a great game.
it's a great fucking game. There's really not anything negative, anything really negative that I can say about it. Um, if I had to rate, if I had to give this a number out of ten, I would probably give it an eight point five or a nine out of ten. I mean, it's it's not perfect. But it's a, it's a solid fucking game. I can't think of anything really negative to say about it, but it's not completely perfect. It's not... The, the, actually, no, the story was actually pretty good too. I didn't comment on the story really, but... I remember... I, it, it's hard for me to really comment on the story because I've known about the story for so long. So it's not like I just experienced it again. Like I, I from when I started before I started playing this game, I knew that Nicole was dead the whole time. Um, but I remember my first time playing it; that really blew me away, and I was like, "Oh my god, you've got to play this game!" And there's a thing I want to tell you, but I can't talk about it. You got to play it so we can talk about how great it is. And I think now I think it's kind of a little cliche. Maybe that's unfair of me to say. That could be. That might be unfair. But I don't know. Um, I can't really fault Dead Space for that though, because at the time that I played it, I thought it was the shit. It was amazing. Still think it's very good. I just don't. I think maybe I was a little bit too. I was I was hyping it up a little bit too much back then, maybe. But again, it's a very good game. Very good story. Um, I don't really remember Dead Space 2's story very well I guess I can't really comment on it. it had very good voice acting also come to think of it this game had some really good voice acting the guys that were doing the the audio logs were fucking amazing voice actors uh, I think one of the dudes name is Temple he was like another engineer that you came across or that, whose audio logs you came across occasionally I think like near the middle of the game you would find his stuff the most. He was a great fucking voice actor. The guy who did the crazy doctor dude at the end who got killed by Kendra. He was a great fucking voice actor. Hammond was really, really good. Kendra was pretty good. She was pretty good. She was not a bad voice actor at all. She was good. But she was not fucking uh, temple level good. She was not that crazy fucking doctor guy good at the end um and the crazy do like the fat the fat guy the fat old guy who got killed by Kendra at the end not the crazy doctor who looked like he was middle eastern with the the beard the black beard and shit who died in like chapter 10 I think yeah not that that guy was okay he wasn't bad but yeah, I feel like the people who, who stood out the most were that Temple guy, Hammond, and that old fat doctor dude. Um, I guess this is more pertaining to Dead Space 2, really, but in Dead Space 2, they give Isaac spoken dialogue, I think. I'm pretty sure. And I remember they kind of give him this sarcastic kind of... Eh... They make him a little bit sarcastic in Dead Space 2, I think. It's been a really long time. I've only played Dead Space 2 like once. But I remember not really liking Isaac's character. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan at all of overly sarcastic, snarky characters in video games. Um, I think, I usually find them annoying. Usually. Usually. I mean, a little bit of sarcasm is okay, but if you're just this dude who doesn't give a fuck and he's too cool for school, like, if, uh, I, I just, that's a turn off for me. Isaac's character wasn't that bad in Dead Space 2. In Dead Space 3, he was a whiny little bitch. And I think he cried at one point in Dead Space 3, and that's unacceptable for a hero of a video game. I don't even care that he was a guy. Like, don't call me sexist for fucking saying that it's unacceptable for a hero of a video game to cry like 
I heard that Samus cries in Metroid Other M, and that's also disgust. That's e that's more disgusting to me because I love the Metroid series more than Dead Space. That Samus cries. Ugh. I think it was Team Ninja that made Other M. What the fuck were you thinking, Nintendo? How could you allow them to do that to Samus? Show her crying? No, never. You know what, I kind of take that back a little bit. <laughs> it's okay for a character to cry a little bit, but something really, 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 really tragic must, like, only following something horribly, horribly tragic. Isaac kind of was just whiny, and he, he, he kind of came across like he was giving up. He was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I don't know. I didn't like the way they did it in Dead Space 3. Um, I don't think at any point in a Rachnoid story I'm going to have any characters crying at all. I've written like 90% of it. And yeah, I don't think at any point... Yeah. Even thinking about like the... Well, I can't really talk about that really, but... Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a fan of main characters crying in video games. It, you can get away with it if you do it really really well and if it's like really really justified like horrible pain, like something super tragic just happened. Mm. Um I'm, I'm, I'm so Dead, Dead Space 2's characterization of Isaac, I didn't love too much. I don't like it when yeah, I, d I don't like just overly sarcastic characters that are just too cool for shit. Um, I'm never going to play that new Devil May Cry game that came out because that new... that I don't even know. I I'm not a Devil May Cry fan, first of all, but the main character, he looks like a complete fucking douche. And I just... I can't... I guess I'm picky about games. I'm picky about like the writing in games. I don't think I was picky about writing before I started writing Arachnoid Story. Like once I started writing my own game, like then I became picky about others and then I became like critical of other games. And I don't think a lot of people are. I feel like I'm in a minority there, but um I like realistic characters. I Here's the thing, here's the thing about like tears from a main character in a video game. Like it's got to be really believable. It's got to be really justified. Like uh, um how do I say this? How do I how do I say this correctly? Like you've got to feel that character's pain. In Persona 3, and in Persona 4, I think. You've got to really care about the character a lot. The, the character has to be very likable for, for one. For you to, I, I don't care about characters that are unlikable douches. The character has to be really likable for you to care about the character. And after you care about the character a lot, you're emotionally invested in that character. Then you can kind of go along with that character and this horrible, tragic thing that is causing this character to cry all of a sudden. That's the way you got to do it, I think. Um, I don't want to spoil Persona, any Persona games at all, but Persona games, Persona 3 and 4 particularly, I've never played 1 or 2. Persona games seem to be extremely good at making you care about the characters that they've created. Um, and I guess it's because you sp they, they have you spend a lot of time, like, um, sp spending time with them, I guess, in the form of, like, establishing s something they call social links. Basically, it's just how strong your friendship, how strong your bond of friendship is, or whatever. Um, but yeah, you really need to care about the character for you to be, for me, I, I'm, I'm talking personally, I guess. I need to care about the character a lot for me to be like, all right, I'm fucking down with this character. This horrible pain he's feeling, I'm feeling it too. I have cried. I have shed tears over video games. I have done that. And if you think I'm a fag for doing that, think about think about this. Have you ever cried during a horrible, sad part in a movie? 
probably have at some point in your life. So you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I know video games are not real and all that, but a great story that can get you that emotionally invested can get tears out of you, can get rage out of you. And that's great. That's, I think, a sign of great writing. And that's why I love Persona 3 and Persona 4. I love Danganronpa. I love the Phoenix Wright series. And I love the Zero Escape series. God damn it, they need to make Zero Escape 3. They had better or I'm going to be very fucking sad. But yeah, that's why I'm so into... Uh, I don't know what the name of the genre is officially. I think it's graphic novel. That's kind of a dumb name for a genre, really. Graphic novel. Like, well... When I, when I hear graphic novel, I think of like a manga. Or a comic. That's kind of a weird term to use to describe a video game. But, whatever. Um, I'm totally not talking about Dead Space anymore. Uh, I guess I was just going off on a, a tangent about good writing and a good story. Um... I should talk about this. I could totally talk about Isaac's character. He basically had no personality throughout the whole game because he had... I don't think he spoke a single word in the game. I don't think he had any dialogue in Dead Space 1. I like that a lot. I like silent protagonists. I like the fact that Link never says anything in Zelda games. I like that a lot. I think the day that they give Link spoken dialogue is the day, well, is the day Zelda takes a significant dive into shit. I think it's already going downhill now. I think that started at Twilight Princess. I didn't give a fuck about that game. Skyward Sword can fuck off. But yeah, if they ever make Link talk, that's, ugh, that's just the end. That's the end of Zelda forever, and it's never coming back. I wish they had stayed with that for Dead Space 2. I had actually wanted to make the protagonist in my game, Arachnoid, silent. I didn't want to give him any dialogue, and I wanted to kind of rely on like player choices for stuff. I wanted to do that at first, and I also, I also wanted this character, the, the protagonist, to be nameless. Like an Earthbound, like you kind of... Well, Ness already has an established name, but you can name the character whatever the hell you want. Um, I wanted to do that at first. I really, really wanted to do that at first, but my two partners actually talked me out of it, and I'm so glad they did. I'm very glad that they did. What I didn't realize at the time was that having a character that doesn't speak ever really makes it hard to have a deep engaging story like uh, I mean because you're playing as the protagonist the entire time like in, de in this game there really isn't a big character arc for Isaac I mean he, he starts off like kind of really hopeful to find Nicole again and he's hallucinating through the whole game and at the very end he's he finds out that Nicole's been dead this whole time and he comes to terms with it when he stops the the video but then he's still hallucinating he sees Nicole in the ship and he gets attacked so that's kind of his whole character arc and there's not much depth to that it's it was kind of Isaac is not it's, it was kind of like Isaac is naive throughout like the first 95% the first like 99% of the game and then right at the end he learns this thing and then he's really sad about it and then at the very end the very ending cutscene he kind of comes to terms with it and he accepts it but immediately after that he's still excuse me he's still hallucinating so I mean there I guess that's technically a character arc that's you know, there was some development there, but it it happened at the very... Really, it didn't even happen at the very beginning of the game. It was like already pre-established. And at the very end, some change to his personality occurs. Kind of. But he's still hallucinating. Um, so yeah, there really wasn't much... I didn't really care very much about Isaac. I mean, I kind of forgot... To be honest, I kind of forgot that he was a person throughout most of the game. 
because he didn't have any dialogue. I guess I kind of thought that he was like a robot or something, which maybe come to think of it, that might have been what the original, what the what the original what Visceral Games had in mind when designing Isaac's character, because he kind of looks like he's in a robot suit. He kind of looks like a robot, like with all his armor on. Maybe that's what they had in mind. I don't know. You didn't see. That, there's another thing. Here's another point. You never saw his face. You only saw his face at the very, very end of the game. So Isaac was not very personified throughout the whole game. The only personification came in the form of him realizing that Nicole had been dead and then accepting it at the very end and then taking off his helmet. You see, he's act he's a person. He's a dude. I mean, I guess you kind of see the back of his head at the beginning of the game, but you don't see the front of it. You don't see his face. You don't see any facial expressions. You don't see him express anything, really. He doesn't say, he doesn't communicate anything throughout like most of the game. That's actually kind of interesting. That's that's a very interesting way to... to Jesus, what was that fucking noise? That's a very interesting way to go about making a protagonist for a game. I hadn't really ever thought about it like that much until just now. Hmm. It's kind of sad that they lose that, though, in Dead Space 2 because, by giving him dialogue even worse giving him like semi sarcastic ish dialogue i think i think i know in dead space 3 he's this like sarcastic mostly sarcastic whiny douchebag yeah isaac is just he's a bitch isaac's a little biatch in dead space 3 um what else can i say about isaac's character uh really not much I like that it, I like that he was silent. I like it a lot. I like that decision. Um uh, I really don't know what else I can say about this game. I don't know what else I can say. I keep on I say that and then I think of like 10 other things. But I don't know what else I can say at this point. I talked about the story. I've talked about Isaac. I didn't really talk about Hammond. Or Kendra, I guess I could. T I guess I could comment on that. Um, basically, basically, Kendra was a. I'm pretty sure that's her name. I could have that completely wrong. Kendra was out to take the marker for herself, and it, you, if you think about it, somebody was like blocking Hammond's transmissions. He was blocking communications from Hammond. That was probably Kendra. She was probably keeping him from getting in contact with Isaac for a few of those chapters there. Um, she didn't have anything to do with his death as far as I know. Um, yeah, Hammond kind of gets fucked by that, by that dark brute in, late in the game. I'm thinking like chapter 9-ish, chapter 8. But um, yeah, Kendra reveals herself as a traitor. Uh... I didn't like I never liked Kendra's character. I always thought she was she was whiny at the beginning, kind of giving Hammond shit when he was trying to fix things. She was kind of being like whiny. She wasn't contributing anything. She was just kind of bitching at him like, "We're going to die here." What like she was just bringing everybody down. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I guess she was kind of supposed to be an unlikable character because she was a traitor this whole time. It was kind of weird, though, at the very end. She was like, I actually started to like you, Isaac. Like, what was that about? Was that like some... Was that showing that she kind of started to have feelings for Isaac? That's weird. Like, I never got that from Kendra. I never, like, heard that in the dialogue. I never got that feeling at all throughout the whole game and all of a sudden she goes I actually started to like you maybe she was just talking about it as a friend I don't know I don't understand girls guys I don't I shouldn't even be commenting on this I'm not qualified to analyze girls and emotions um, Hammond's character not really any depth to it he was just the captain leader guy who was leading the shit and he was trying to get them out of there and at one point he was like fuck the mission we're getting the fuck out of here and then he dies um 
don't think I could say anything else about the characters, to be honest. Nicole? Not really anything there either. She was pretty much just a, um, a figment of Isaac's imagination. You know what, though? That really doesn't make sense in some parts, because like, the first time you see Nicole in person, you kind of have to protect her while she's on the other side of the room doing something, unlocking a door or something like that. How the fuck is Isaac... How, who, how did that door unlock if Nicole wasn't a physical being? Like, I don't even know. I don't know. That was that was weird. I guess that's a tiny little plot hole, but whatever. Because I mean, like, it would make sense if it would. You would you would think that you know Nicole, you know, being a figment of Isaac's imagination, would never interact with objects physically ever, because she couldn't. But then she does at one point. Not a major plot hole, really. It's just kind of a little thing I noticed. Um. Ah, uh, God, I'm really reaching for stuff here. I'm reaching for something. So anything, I, I want to be as thorough as I possibly can. Leave no stone unturned. I don't know what else I could say, to be honest. I just, I'm out of shit to say. So I think I'm going to end it here. Um. Ugh, God, it's really fucking hot in this room. I'm sweating. <sighs> okay, so... I've recorded about three hours of gameplay today, again. Um, I basically rambled on about this game for about 45 minutes-ish. Um, so I think I'm going to throw... I think that's, I'm going to cut that into four episodes. Three 30-minute episodes as usual, and then the last one I'll just... I'll make a giant episode. That'll take me fucking forever to upload, but whatever. It's just a one-time thing, you know. Alright, so I guess I'm done with Dead Space. Never again. Kind of feel sad to say that, I, I, but I probably will never play this game again. Probably not. Dead Space 2, I may possibly play at some point. If I do, I will definitely record it. You know what, honestly, there really isn't any reason for me to record Dead Space 2 because, again, it's so similar to Dead Space 1. Like... Just for the sake of like gameplay analysis, there's really not any new stuff I could say about Dead Space 2 that I haven't already said in Dead Space 1. It's a very good, solid game. Um, so I may actually never play Dead Space 2, I don't know. But if I do, it'll be a very long time from now. Uh, I'm looking at all my PS3 games on my bookshelf right now. I'm not sure if I want to play and record any of those. Uh, I don't know what I want to play next, to be honest. I really don't know. Uh, there are some, em again, I've said this a few times, there are some emulator games that I could play, some Super Nintendo games. Uh, I may look through that list. I don't know, but... Um, four videos, that's eight days, plus I've got another two. So I've got about ten days worth of uploads to work with right now, so that's almost two weeks. And in a few days, I'm going to be recording Corpse Party with my little brother, I think, I hope. Um, so that should last me another eight days, I guess, if, if we do two hours. So I guess I'm not going to have to worry about uploading videos for like two and a half weeks. Hmm. I mean, I guess I'm not going to have to record anything aside from Corpse Party for another two and a half weeks. So that's plenty of time for me to come up with ideas. I don't know. Again, I, I, I'm considering Majora's Mask because there's a lot of stuff I could say about that game. That would be... A, if I'm going to record any 3D Zelda game, I would want it to be Majora's Mask. Much more than Ocarina of Time, which I don't really like very much. I like it. I like Ocarina of Time. But it's not a great game, I don't think. I mean, it was great for its time, of course. It was fucking... That's the first 3D Zelda. Everyone was losing their minds, but I don't think it's a better game than Majora's Mask. My opinion, though. Um, anyway, I would like to do Majora's Mask at some point. I don't know when. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know what I'm going to record next. I'll I'll figure it out. 
I'll do a thing. I'll probably tweet it out too when I when I decide. But again, I've got like two and a half, three weeks to figure all that out, so not in any hurry. Oh, by the way, um, I have a Twitter account that I'm very active on. Uh, my old Twitter account was at WildWolfG, but I don't use that anymore. A new Twitter account, if you want to follow me, um, is RG underscore Randroid. And um, I mostly post stuff relating to video games mostly I sometimes post about other stuff I share a lot of the video game music that I'm into uh, anytime I upload a video to YouTube I'll make a I'll tweet about it I'll make a quick tweet just to show everyone that hey fucking I uploaded a video please watch it please um, so yeah if you want to I guess stay updated on my uploads then you could do so on Twitter I also have a Facebook account for this channel that I have linked to my Twitter. It basically just I basically just have like all of my tweets forwarded to that Facebook page. So I don't post anything on there like specifically. But yeah, again, if I if, if you don't have a Twitter or you don't if you hate Twitter, if you hate birds or something, then you could um like that Facebook page and you could stay in touch. You can keep track of when I upload videos that way if you prefer. Um, I'm really hot in this room. This I don't know if you guys noticed, but I you don't hear any noise in the background because I've turned off the two fans that I normally have running, and I even unplugged my laptop fan so it won't make any noise to be picked up on the microphone because that's really annoying when that happens but I'm doing it for the recording and as soon as I stop recording they're both coming back on and uh, yeah this is terrible alright I can't I'm out of shit to say I don't have anything more to add to this video thank you guys for watching uh, stay tuned for my corpse party after this I guess um, and after that I just I don't know Stay tuned for whatever the hell comes after that. Alrighty, guys. I'll see you next time. Later.